Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video, and it is time for our last Great Dark Beyond card review. We have two insane, including just one ridiculously kind of broken looking, legendary minion, more Librem support, Paladin Stone might be returning to Hearthstone. So we're gonna go over all these cards. And of course, if you wanna win these cards, we have a giveaway going on for two regular pre-orders, three mega bundles out of my pocket to enter that giveaway. Like and comment in the video description below. Every thousand subs we get, and this is an update on uh, the giveaway situation early next week. We're gonna give you guys till early next week, probably on Monday, a chance to enter this giveaway. So yeah, just hit that sub button. Every thousand subs until next week, I will add another mega bundle. So hit that sub button, make me go broke. Basically want to time it with the rewards track refresh, which is probably not coming till early next week where we'll have our next giveaway. So yeah, so let's start off with one of the absolutely ridiculous new legendaries here in Lumia, a six Mana, nine, nine, minion, nine, nine. Sorry, I miss Brooklyn, nine, nine. Um, so yeah, I think this is the second ever six mana, nine, nine after our boy Swamp King Dread got buffed to six mana. Yeah, what does this card do? Well, it has lifesteal, so that is pretty darn insane. And after a hero takes damage, they become immune for the rest of of the turn. So basically you play this, your opponent hits you and they can't hit you anymore after that. Works like evasion from back of the day, that rogue secret where anytime you take damage, you just go immune, except it's double-sided. So when it's your turn, as long as this is alive, you can only hit your opponent once. And this is an insanely large minion, right? You face like a token deck, anything aggressive, um, they can only hit you once and they're likely not gonna be able to kill you in one swoop, like fail swoop, right? One blow, then they gotta remove this. And if they don't have hard removal, guess what? They have to hit into a nine nine that has lifesteal. You're gonna heal to full basically. This takes two hits. You're healing to 18. That's without hand buffing, which, you know, Paladin's pretty known for and pretty good for. And this is a card you can replay with Con Man. You can cheat it out in your rogue package with your coins. This is something that is absolutely going to see play, in my opinion, in these slower decks. The decks that aren't looking to kill you really quickly, you know, your Pipsy Paladins, um, I guess even like a Lanessa Paladin or whatever, those type of decks, you play this, it's just like you get either to stall a bit, your opponent's gotta kill it before they can kill you, or you just like fully heal because they gotta kill this before they can even hit you. And again, you could play multiple of them. It just seems insane. Like it's overstated six drop with mostly upside. I feel like you get to utilize this way more than your opponent in particular. If this is alive, you get to hit for nine. They probably don't have something with nine attack on the board, right? So there's tons going on for this card. It's definitely for the slower decks. I don't think you play this in an aggressive deck, but maybe just maybe, maybe I'm also overrating it, but I feel like this is a super strong card in those slower like mid-range decks, maybe a combo deck where again, you're using it to stall, get that immunity, get that big life steal. I'm gonna give this a four to five in standard. I think it's ridiculous, especially that you can con man this play. Can we change con man? I know I keep mentioning it, but can we revert that back? Big spell mage, by the way, still dominant. Like, oh my God, what is this patch gonna look like? Regardless, yeah, I'm gonna give this a four to five in standard. And in wild, we got like Reno Paladin. We might have the return of Libram Paladin in wild two, which I think will be in standard. By the way, yeah, you definitely could play this in standard uh, Libram Paladin, of course. Um, I'm gonna give it a three. I think it's got a shot. Got the Reno decks. You got the you got the Libram decks of the world. It absolutely has a shot. Uh, next card we have here is the Orbital Satellite, a one mana rare spell. Discover a Draenei. If you played an adjacent card this turn, discover another. So one mana, possibly discover two cards. Of course, discover, you know, when it's a more broad pool is not as consistent. Although I'm, I'll have to really take a look and see like how many Draenei's are in the game right now. Cause right now for Paladin, if you get the, the mana cheat one on your Librams, that'd be really good. Maybe another Velen to take advantage of some of your Librum battle cries or whatever. That could be quite nice. and. Yeah, you play like just any card beside it. It's one mana get two. And you're likely, I think, to probably get something you really want. So this could be a, like a Librem card, maybe like the 28th card of the deck or whatever that 
kind of the fringe option you might throw in there to get some extra value and get those value bridges rise because I feel like the paladin ones you really want. Thankfully, that nine nine is not a Janai, but there there's another Janai coming here that's uh that's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, um, I think this could see play, but only in those fringe. Like I feel like a Libram deck. I don't know what else would really want this. It's pretty much a Libram or bust. We'll see if the math ends up working out that you discover what you want reliably enough, but I'll give it a three. I think it has a bit of a shot in a wild where they're probably gonna update a bunch of older cards to have to deny. I imagine this will not be worth it. We'll give it a one there, but again, maybe just maybe in standard. This card, however, you are definitely 100% playing in any Libram deck uh, in standard or wild, and that is the Interstellar Researcher. It is a two mana, two two Draenei, so that would be really nice to discover. And it has not only Battle Cry, but also Spell Burst, draw a Libram. So you can tutor your Libram cards with this and draw two cards for two mana on a two mana two two. I'm not gonna give it a two. I'm not gonna bait it into that, but that's incredible. That is super good. Obviously only good in Libram decks. And if you look at wild, there is no tutor for Libram. So you got tutors for like uh, holy spells and like one attack minions, but not specifically Libram. So that's really valuable there too. I'm going to give this a four to five in standard. The, I would give it a five if it was draw like two regular cards, but because it's Libram's and only Libram's, it's a bit more narrow. And if Libram Paladin doesn't work or isn't good enough, this card's useless, right? It's gotta work in that deck, but this is one of the cards that will absolutely allow that to be a reality. So we'll give it a four in standard and where I'm not as sure as Libra Paladin thriving in wild because it hasn't in quite some time, but it might get that jump start from the this, this starship expansion with the Libra's. We'll give it a three for wild again. I, I feel like everything Libra, I'm going to give it a three in wild because I do think it has a bit of a shot. And hey, we have another Libra that you can draw, discount, recast or whatever. It is the Libra of faith this is a six mana holy spell which obviously you can discount and eventually get to zero you summon three 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 drenais with divine shield if this costs zero you give them rush so this one feels like it'll be a lot slower a lot harder especially in standard to get down to zero to get that rush but at the end of the day, let's say I discounted this by three. I get three, three, three divine shields. That, that's really good, right? If I get it to zero, that's like absolutely broken, amazing. But you might not be too upset. Of, well, on turn four, I, I developed nine, nine in stats and I've got divine shields and, you know, that, that's pretty good, right? So, um, yeah, the upside of the zero, it's not like the four mana spell where I feel like you absolutely need to get that to zero to get that value, the one time plus three plus three not good enough but for this you can just play this to you know fight for the board and you'll be pretty happy and again at zero absolutely broken i mean zero mana nine nine divine shield rush that's the state of hearthstone we're in ladies and gentlemen i will give this a four to five in standard i will give it a three to five in uh in wild um again more Librams there the better you have even more redundancy consistency all that stuff that's really good and uh it could be a pretty darn impressive card and the last card to be reviewed, at least on this channel, for the Great Dark Beyond, is the returning Yorel. Is she truly a beacon of hope for the metagame of Hearthstone, which is very big spell mage and terrible right now? Yes, a five mana, four, three, Draenei. So again, another one you can discover. And she has Rush, Death Rattle. Get three different Librams from an older timeline. That's right, you can get Librams from wild and i believe there are only four so you're almost guaranteed to get the one you don't want right or whatever like, or the other way around right but yeah well i believe off the top of my head we're not going to look because i'm not going to do it i think i remember them all you have the libram of wisdom you can get which is an incredible two mana spell um you can easily play it for zero once discounted by two keep repeating it works really well with liadrid which again is in the core set and she'll add it back to your hand for whatever you've cast it on. 
That could be really good. You have the Libram of Hope, which was like a nine mana spell. It gives you an, it can restore eight health and get an eight, eight divine shield taunt, which is very powerful, was always really good. And yeah, big heal, big taunt, big minion on the board can be really nice. You also have the Libram, I believe of justice. It's like the, uh, it was originally six buff to five, Basically, got to equip a 1-4 weapon, set all the enemy's health to 1, nice quality effect, and then the Libram of I never remember the name. It's the big weapon. It's like a 7-mana 5-3 weapon, and if you corrupt it, so playing a card that costs more than it, and as a Libram, you can discount this so it gets a lot easier, it'll gain lifesteal. It didn't see a ton of play back in the day. It's definitely going to be considered the worst option, I think. Last second editor's note here, uh, Libram of Judgment apparently will not be an option. You're actually guaranteed to get all three of the original Ashes of La Outland cards. So Wisdom, uh, Justice, and Hope. You're actually not going to get the weapon. They didn't want to confuse people with Corrupt, and the, the other three are just better. So yeah, ignore the talk of the uh, odds and all the stuff I'll be going on here. But yes, you will always get the same three Librams. Well, you're getting three of the four. You're getting three of the four because it's different. So you're almost guaranteed you really want Libra Wisdom, right? And because Urel is a Paladin card, you can play like Con Man and then get another Urel and get three more Librams and really get things going. So yeah, this is a ton of value. Um, you're getting mostly just really good cards that might be free and let you, you know, fight for the board and do more Libram things. And I feel like if you're playing Libram Paladin again, you're going to be wanting to play this card, whether it's standard, while it's a proactive minion too, right? Rush, you don't have to wait for that death rattle. That could be really beneficial. We will give it a four to five in standard, a three out of five in wild. And yes, Libram Paladin does look like it could be a legitimate force in Hearthstone. So there you go. That is every card reviewed. We finally got through it all, all over like a billion videos, even though it was leaked all early. You guys still all tuned in. It was amazing. So thank you so much for that. Um, Theory Crafting will be going live on Twitch tomorrow. We'll have a video updating you guys, but there's a lot of free packs to go over or to get tomorrow. And there's like the early access tavern brawl. We got all the details on that. We're gonna have videos on that tomorrow. And then we'll have like the tier list on the legendaries. We'll have theory crafting gameplay videos. We'll have tons of stuff to go over. We await the release of the Great Dark Beyond on November 5th. And I hope you guys stick around. We still got the giveaways going on. Should be a lot of fun. Let me know what you guys think about the whole set, all the cards, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends. <laughs>